Orale. What are you smelling? Like a Twizzler, but it was already open, so I don't trust it. I started recording when you did that, too. <laughs> <laughs> Kids, don't eat candy that's already opened. There you go. Uh, it's a PSA. What a wonderful intro. Uh, this is uh, This message was paid for by Martin himself. Don't eat open candy. Good. I'm very good. Still getting over haunt over. Um, I'm probably still just in the middle of haunt depression, but yeah. <laughs> That's why we do character appreciation month for for for, for all the f- the folks out there who are struggling through haunt depression right now. Uh, we we want to do these to get a more inside depth of some of our favorite monsters. I had not. I had some I had somebody on my Uber ride open the door and say happy holidays, and I immediately cringe. I'm just like. Please give me a moment to mourn you, mother. Like, I get another Uber driver pass? Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. That, that is tough because people go from straight Halloween to right to Christmas, right? It's like Thanksgiving doesn't exist anymore, you know? I mean, I love me some turkey, some ham, some mashed potatoes. Last year, I had a little, like, cookout, little Friendsgiving with uh, Kiwi and another friend. That was pretty dope. Oh, yeah. Because most of my family was out of, out of the house, so I just, I just cooked a bunch of food. I'm coming over. It was bomb. Here. I'm coming over. It was here. bomb. I'm coming down. <laughs> Enough said. You just you just said food and I'm there. You know. Oh man. Um. So can I cuss? You what's up? Can I cuss? Of course. Oh okay. Just this, making sure. This ain't no PG show, bro. Okay, okay. Just viewer discretion is advised. That's all we say. Um, yeah. <laughs> just put that in the beginning of everything. No, I mean. Yeah. It, so you've been scaring for some time now, but this was the first season for you at Knotts, correct? This is the this is year one at the Knott's Berry Farm. This is year one at Knott's, and and you had the distinct pleasure of closing out Dark Ride. Dark Ride, yep. R.I.P. Dark Ride. Oh, monkey man. tragically burned in the fire. All the other monkeys are fine. <laughs> one monkey left early, and they just forgot I existed, and I just just terminated. Terminated it. Just the thumbs up and everything, right? <laughs> I mean. That is that must be that must feel you must feel honored about that though. I mean, to to, to get to close out a fan favorite maze uh, at Not Scare from John Cook, uh, design maze. Yes, that, did, yeah. Um, I, I got to actually do that on the behind the fog tour. Uh, oh, you did the behind the fog. That's cool. Yeah, and, and that was one of the mazes we got to go through. Uh, I just remember that day being so hot, and that was one of the mazes that had AC. So I was like, hell yeah, let's go into it. Um, and to see the maze behind the scenes and then to see it at night, it's like, it's really two different experiences. And, and I didn't realize how much Easter eggs there were in this maze until I got the behind the fog tour stuff. I would have never caught on to if, if I didn't take that tour. But I mean, for you kind of going into this, this whole thing, what was it like for you to, um, approach this role and approach this character? I mean, you're playing one of the, the monkeys, obviously. So, I mean, but what was it like? I mean, that, that looks like uh, that area, you were in the, the crates area. Am I correct? Yes. About that? I was in the crates area. Yeah. yeah I, most of us, most of us, except for one of the other monkeys, one of the monkeys was able to, uh, move over into clown hell. But yeah, the monk, the monkey room was, it's kind of a room I'm kind of already used to in other mazes where it's just a playground where I could jump around, crawl, hide, do all that kind of stuff, which I'm used to. I've even done that during um, Dark Harbor in my room on at door 13. There's a lot of places to just hide, especially in plain view. That's what I abused a lot. Even now this year, just being in plain sight. I scared somebody just by like, being in like a little crotch position and they see me and they're like, nah, I'm not going in there. Nah. nah. That's that. <laughs> Every, everybody like loves hiding. It's a very easy tactic, but being obvious is something like, that's another like part of your brain that you have to unlock. 
being scary out in the open. I see you. I see you. Yeah, I know you see me, and I'm still going to scare you. Oh, yeah. That's uh, that's exactly the approach. I, I got to scare act a little bit this year at um at Dark Harvest this year, and that was a lot of fun. And that was actually one approach that I took because I was down a, like a long hallway, fog coming up, and then like they came out of this like elevator like room and stuff. And the first thing they approach is that hallway, but then you see this this tall guy slowly stand up and walk towards you. Like I had so many great reactions, like nah, nah, I don't want to go. Like they would not go, and I was getting closer and closer. So like I I feel that I think that one's one of the the easiest, but one of the most strongest scares out there is just being there in plain sight. Yeah, and there were there were in cast eight there was two monkeys. So my partner monkey, oh my god, God bless her. We were just like in sync she gets them i get them she gets them again i crawl under and i get them one more time and we've tricked everybody just like how many monkeys are there there's only two but they think there's like five or eight hey man that means you guys are quick exactly. enough on what you guys did man that's that, that, that's what i love about that maze i mean that maze was just so interesting the way like you got to go through this whole dark ride and then you got to go behind the scenes and see all the, like these these people who are taking back the dark ride as like their kind of their playground their 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 kingdom and and yeah and you see that and and so going into this maze what was what was like easily like one of your favorite uh moments that you had working this one obviously closing it out it's huge so i mean there must have been a few good moments that you had that you just loved uh, on some nights mm, one of my favorite moments oh one of my favorite moments um so i got way more into ice nine kills this season and I know uh, Ragdoll and one of my other friends who's in Dark Ride, uh, Matthew, they got me way more into Ice Night Kills. I got to see them in Vegas. Uh, but before that, uh, he went, um, Spencer Charnas, he went through the Dark Ride maze. And it took me like a moment. It was just like, wait a minute, was that? And he was just about to leave my room and it clicked in my head. Oh my God, that's the dude from Ice Night Kills. Cause he looked at me and he goes, monkey. <laughs> And then like he went through the rest of it and my friend Matthew and Ragdoll were in Clown Hell and they both kind of like fangasmed a little bit. So that was pretty cool. That's awesome, man. I mean, Ice Nine Kills, a band that uh, if, if those who don't know, uh, they're really inspired by horror and, and haunt. They they love all that stuff and a lot of their music covers that um, to the to the freaking the flesh and bone of that band. But uh, that's cool that he got to visit. I mean, that's where a lot of their inspiration came in. You got to have like that fanboy moment and then uh, yeah. got to have a fanboy moment as well. So it's pretty cool getting to see more like famous people come through um, haunt events. Even last year, I saw the Dodgers team come through the hayride. That's and I was right. just like, that's the Dodgers. That's right. That's right. That's right. I had heard stories about that. That's really cool, man. I mean, you got to get, have back to back, but let's, speaking of going back, let's go back for you a little bit. When did, when did scaring, going to haunts and everything start for you when, when did you really get into this okay the history of why i got in here uh, so i grew up religious and halloween was just like a taboo subject whatever later on in life my parents kind of let go of that leash on halloween because they know i just like scary stuff i liked horror right. but nothing like haunt or even like i haven't seen that many scary movies um until like after I graduated, one of my friends, uh, no, even before that, my friend invited me to come to Scary Farm just as a guest. So Scary Farm was the first haunt I visited. Um, it was kind of like, all right, all right, so developed a phobia of rabbits, but whatever, got home, whatever. After that, then he started, my best friend, he started getting into scare acting. And one day while I was visiting, just, just a nice biannual like visit down to Del Mar, he invites me for at least a voluntary night at uh, Scream Zone. I was like, oh, uh, I don't know, maybe. I kind of just want to go home, but <laughs> all right, I'll try it out. And then, yeah, they put me in zombie makeup and they gave me a chain. I just started going, I just started going ham. Hey. And it was fun. No, that's Later, I mean it was, this, was, this was 2018. This was 2018 season. Anyone and then that knows you though, going ham to him, I mean, this kid, when he's out there, he is freaking on a whole nother level. And like I am proud to call him a friend because I get to see him do that. I mean, I've seen this kid do some good stuff out there. 
I'll explain you. Um, then later that year, uh, the family he was living with, uh, the girl, um, <laughs> Jail Bates, uh, one of our friends, invites me over to uh, Dark Harbor. I had no idea it existed. And I'm just like, huh, all right, um, I guess I'll go. It sounds like fun. All right, I'm vibing. Let's go. So throughout all that, we hit through all the mazes. And I got to see the slider show and seeing the team down there do the show, something just clicked in my brain. I kind of had no direction in life. I flunked out of college. I didn't really know what to do with music or psychology. So I was just like, eh, whatever. And then seeing the show, just something clicked. I was just like, I don't care what it takes, what I have to do. I want to do that. I, I'm set. I'm full sending it. I got the. I just, I just looked up videos, how to get the gear, how to make it. All right, and then the she invited me out to the rink to meet the team, slide with them, and the rest is history on how I got into the industry. Did Dark Harbor, Hayride, and now Knots. So this I'll is your. Is this your third season in scaring now? Technically fourth. Fourth. I did it Dark Harbor. Right. Pandemic hit, but I still did a home haunt. I made a maze in front of my house. Nice. So I still scared in 2020. 21, I did a hayride. And now I am settled at knots. Four years journey, man. So let's talk let's talk year one, which was I believe 2019 Dark Harbor. Man. 2019 Dark Harbor. You go see the slider show, you're inspired. You're like, I want to do this. This is it. Like whatever it takes, I'm doing it. You go, you get to you get to learn how to slide and whatnot. Auditions come for Dark Harbor, man. What was it like going through that, and, and how confident did you feel? Were you very nervous? Did you not know how this was going to go down? Like, how, What were your feelings going into like auditioning? So I think before auditioning, um, I do want to talk about like the team. A lot of people did. Some people were expecting me to like already like just try out for the team already. I didn't feel comfortable because it felt like I haven't earned – street positions because i've even heard stuff like that with knots it's just like man you won streets oh man that's such a big deal i didn't feel like i've earned my monster position this is like i really want to get through the nitty-gritty the dirt i want to go i want to go through it i want to actually earn it i, I don't know it's a personal thing where i feel like i have to prove that i can do it so i kind of just like nah i don't want to be in the team just yet let me try out just on my own, even though they got my back and everything. I'm just like, let me earn it on my own. Right. Yeah, I did auditions. Uh, pretty nervous because I look up to David Wally a lot. And all the stories I hear about him, his photographic memory, the way he can be from like nice to fucking pissed off in a heartbeat. Just like, oh, okay, this is a big deal. This is a big deal. So I kind of just did what I did. He had me follow him around, like chasing him a bit. He stopped and I bumped into him. I'm, and in, a, in an instant, I'm just like, it's over. I'm done. I, I'm not going to make it this year. This is it. <laughs> over. <laughs> it's, it's that Deku scene from My Hero Academia where he trips over. So it was like, that's it. I failed you all night. <laughs> but no, nah, it was all good. And I got uh, a role in Feast, the Feast Maze. Feast. But not just any role. In that year, that's when they gave us the okay to use door 13. And that's why they put this lucky motherfucker. Door 13, man. Now, the same year you started like at, at Dark Harbor was actually the same year that was the one and only year I got to go to Dark Harbor. Um, mm -hmm. I, 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 I remember going through Feast. I, I think I remember hitting my head on pipes the most on that maze because I'm too damn tall and the freaking <laughs> pipes are too damn – it's an old boat. It's been around since the 19 freaking 20s, 30s, 40s, you know, so it's it's been around. Yeah. It's, it's made its way to Germany and back. Um, mm -hmm. But it, it, it was something for me that was a, a very – special event something that you hadn't seen at most events especially using the boat's history and, and using places on the boat that are actually haunted and, and whatnot yeah. so to go through a maze like feast was was very uh very new to me overall 
Uh, and, and it felt like it, it really was the one haunt event I could say that really, no matter where I was, scared the shit out of me because I know the history of that boat and adding like a horror element to it. That's where, that's where like stuff changed in me too. It was just like, I didn't really believe in like spirits and stuff being on the ship. That changes you, man. That changes. You just you now you got your own intro. My name is Martin, and I am I've never believed in ghosts until I came face to face. <laughs> till I came face to face. No, till I came face to face with Jackie and Half Hatch. <laughs> Both of them messed with me hardcore. I'm just like, no, nope, no, nope, I believe. All right, I believe. I believe. I believe. I believe. You're like, I'm done. I'm good. <laughs> I believe. Uh, so you had you, you get into feast, man, and and how does that go for you? I mean, obviously we're we're talking about the paranormal stuff on the boat. Uh, did you hear, see anything? Did you just have? A, did you make the most out of what you can with that? Me, like, how, what, what, how was the experience for you? Being at Door Thirteen, that's where, um, infamously, where um, John Patters was tragically cut in half, and his spirit still roams uh, that area. And again. I'm religious and I don't or I didn't really believe in like supernatural kind of stuff. I kind of just equate to it as just demons, whatever. Like it's not really the person. But after a while, like the the, the first night, I was just kind of going crazy. I did whatever I wanted. And I had the metal plated, um, I had the clacker gloves and I kept slamming his door and everything like that. I, I didn't care, whatever. Second night comes around and my buddies – uh, kill us and a bunch of other people pull me to the side and and tell me yo what are you doing he's like well what do you mean like stop banging on his door I'm, what because the freaking um our other friend who's playing as half at henry he's he's claiming that he's been seeing stuff down there like the spirit is pissed off and is taking it out on half hatch so they tell me stop banging on his door i'm just like okay i won't bang on the door whatever please <laughs> and so we get through um, uh, opening gates. I do my little scares and I run my ass back to my maze. I get in my spots and I have steel toes as well just to protect my toes because I kind of banged them up on the first night. So I wear steel toes. And so I'm tapping around because I'm anxious. I'm ready. I'm excited to scare. And because I'm tapping, something sets off and I hear a clang. And in my head, I'm just like, nothing is supposed to like, the ship is parked. I'm all the way at the bottom. There's no airflow. There's no way anything should be moving down here. And so I'm skeptical and I'm just like, yeah, sure, whatever. And so I tap my feet to egg it on like, yeah, sure, whatever. And I hear it gets louder. And so now I'm tapping my feet because now I'm scared. But I'm still tapping. So it thinks I'm making it on. And I just hear like the loudest clang I've ever heard down there. And I got up. I'm just like, no, 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 no. I pissed off. I pissed off John. I pissed off half hatch. And so I had to go like, Oh yeah. And then bam. And so I was just like, dude, this isn't all right. And so afterwards I had like, I made a little offering, like just around it. Like I put little goodies or whatever. I did whatever I could as a Christian to like make amends, drop peace, whatever. After that, silence. He's like, all right. He's silence. like, I'll let you I'll let you live. You good. <clears throat> he gave you the he gave you the uh the okay to scare for the rest of the season. Yeah, it's like, yeah, now you know I'm real. All right. So, all right, deuces. Like, Got you, homie. Not gonna fuck with you again. <laughs> I was yeah. like, if you can help me get some good scares, that'd be amazing. <laughs> But yeah, that was on the scare side. I was able to just play down there, um, abusing obvious spots, abusing the escalator down there, some stairways, crawling around, climbing on like the little like guardrails. Right. And my favorite, my favorite section of it's actually is like you can scare by the escalator area, by the door, and then there's a little back way where you can just sprint all the way down. And catch the people as they're leaving. Be like, how'd you get in front of me so fast? And it's and it's a barrack. There's like this column that has guardrails too. It's like a square. And so they either walk through this way out or they can walk through this way out. But they're not supposed to go this way. Right. And that's where I catch them. They leave this way and I catch them on the other side of the column. So I got one girl and she went from walking to fetal position in half a second. Oh. 
You got. I mean, <laughs> that, I mean that. That's probably the record time you've ever seen that. Yeah, she was just like, <laughs> just wrecking. And I, I could, I couldn't help it. I started, I started giving an answer. Like I told her all the ways I was gonna cut her up, turn her bone marrow into soup, called her pigs in different languages. It's just like, and then her friend had to pick her up and just walk away. And then everybody behind was just like, just clapping. They just got a full on <laughs> show for you, my friend. <laughs> they were like, all right. <laughs> yeah, man. I mean, okay. I so I got a, I got another question. I mean, this was I mean the name Nameless. Where, mm-hmm. did, that, where did that originate from? Did you get that at Dark Harbor? No, um, Nameless came because like I know you needed. I know people have like haunt names, but I didn't. I didn't want to give myself like a name, so I just had an Instagram called. Well, it was first Nameless Slider because I don't have a name. I don't have a haunt name. I haven't been here long enough, so it's just been. I don't know, like. Empty, XXX, non-applicable, nameless, NA, just like, yeah. Until I, and, and I was hoping, like, before Dark Harp opened, I would do so many stupid shit that I, I hoped one of these things would give me a name. Getting drunk at Looney's party, eating a spider, uh, something. <laughs> Let me do something where it could give me a name. And they couldn't think of anything for the longest time, for three years now. And they're just like, fuck it. You answered to Nameless, so fuck it. You're stuck with Nameless. nameless. Do you, is that something that you like? Is that You've actually grown to it? Is it something that you're like, hey, you know what? Fits me. I have grown to it because I finally like I finally made a character around uh, that name. I finally, um, my current look for my clown with the X's and everything. That name nameless, like he doesn't exist. He's not supposed to exist. He's not supposed to be around. You're on like, the team now, right? Mm, I'm a prospect. They're still looking into it, just like just to see like where I can really be put on the team because I haven't been scaring with them. I haven't scared with them on streets, right. so it's still like still trying to like I'm still trying to go through that osmosis phase. Hey. Prospect's still good, man. That means you're you're working your ranks up. You're, I'm still you're around them. I'm still around with them. Yeah, earning your stripes. Hey, but no, I've seen you slide. I've seen what you can do, man. And it's 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 crazy out there, man. I can't wait to see you on a street position. Uh, come hopefully next year for Scary Farm for the fiftieth. But if not, I mean, I know in the future, dude. Once you get your your hands on those streets and then the, and pad it up, it's gonna be amazing, man. I'm probably gonna cry on the first night. Hey, you you earned it then if you cry. <laughs> if I hit streets after the first night, I'm just gonna cry. Um so year two, 2020, the pandemic, man. This was a hard one for a lot of people. <laughs> yep. A lot of people, man. This was a hard one. And and you figured out a way to still make the most of it. What did you do for 2020? It was a Saturday night, full moon, Halloween nights. I did not care what I had to do. I'm going to put on something because this is like the most badass thing that could happen for a Halloween. It's just perfect. Saturday night, full moon. Come on. I'm not going to let anything stop me from at least doing something at home to at least like represent something haunt wise while still being safe. Still want to do something. So I got together. uh, I convinced uh, my uncle who is a pastor i convinced him like hey can i use some of the tents like the canopy tents for my maze and he's like sure okay he's like all right cool so i got a bunch of like canopies i set it up in like i set them up into all together i got a, a bunch of trash bags a lot of paint i went out and just splurged on a bunch of halloween decorations and effects. I got laser lights. I got I got a fog machine. I got everything. Webs, everything. And I had help from two of my friends, uh, Kiwi and Nathan, uh, one of our other friends uh, back in the Dark Harbor days. Uh, and yeah, I made one room. I just I just based it off of really easy phobias because I can't really think of like a theme for a whole maze. So I just made three moves out of very basic fears. A room of spiders, so there's webs. It's like creepily lit. There's a bunch of spiders and stuff. Why you gotta do that? Why you gotta do that, bro? I hate spiders. Um, second second room was a doctor's office because pandemic. Yeah. So that was pretty easy. 
Um, and the last room was where I had the fog machine and the laser lights to simulate the um the fog lake, like in the depths and intrepid. I I love that effect so cool. much. That's what we call it. Having having like a bunch of like that's cookbook right there, buddy. Just, just down. I love that effect so much. And it was a room of snakes eating rabbits because yeah, people don't like snakes, and I personally don't like rabbits, so I oh, hated. Okay. Hated like painting all these little rabbits and stuff. I was just like, mm, I don't want to be in this room. <laughs> yeah, I know I'm weird. All right, you can all make fun of me now. I I'm scared of rabbits. Hey, you know we're all scared of any something. You know, it's a weird one, but yeah, hey. no no rabbits, no rabbits allowed in my house. All right. And it was good. I was at my front door and I had a six foot pole and I just shot candy through it into kids trick or treating bags. That it was hurt. cool. I like that, it I, like that idea. I saw that a lot. Yeah. It was cool too because throughout the maze I can hear at least one little girl crying. I was like, all right, I made it scary enough. Made I did it. Enough. Hey, you <laughs> accomplished it. it. You you kept you were part of the reason why Halloween stayed alive. I accomplished some form of haunt where somebody still got scared at my house. Did you uh I, I, I had like this like weird like farmer get up with a skull mask and my little um my little cloth face mask that had like a zipper mouth, cowboy hat, and I had my sliders. I had my knee pads. And while people were leaving, I just ran behind them and just go, ah! <laughs> chase them out of my house. Done. I mean, dude, you were one of the reasons why Halloween got to be Halloween that year. I mean, it was already a tough one as it is. And for you to go on about and, and, and you know, make And something. people people were excited to come through because I even put out flyers on like, every corner of like my block is like hey come to this address there's gonna be a scary maze come through yeah and people saw it and they were asking like is this where the maze is at it's like yeah come on in come on in it's like, all right cool i mean you again there was not much to do and you gave something you gave people something to do and and that's i think that's why a lot of people were like hell yeah we're doing this we want to do something mm -hmm. to get out of the house you know so yeah. thank you for keep, helping keep halloween alive you're part of that uh you're part of that yep. solution right there Yep. That must be cool. Now, 2021 rolls around, man. Pandemic is, uh, you know, a lot better than it was the year before. Mm -hmm. before. It's a lot more lenient. Yeah. It's yeah. it's loosening the grip. We still were on restrictions, uh, you know, as far as masking up at certain events with a lot of people. But um, you apply at the Los Angeles Haunted Hayride in 2021. Mm -hmm. how, did, how did that experience go? I know you were in Dead End Diner the brand new maze for 2021, the one and only year that it was there. So you got to be part of something a little bit special right there too. Yeah, it opened and closed that year. I didn't know. I didn't know I was closing a maze. I, yeah, you opened it and maze. a maze in one year. How many people could say they've actually done that? <laughs> it was cool. I was working. I was already working in LA at the time. So it was just the easiest option. Like it was the closest thing to where I was working where I didn't have to like fight tooth and nail. I was like, can you just give me these days off? Can you give me these hours off? Yeah. Uh, they weren't going to, uh, the yeah. yeah, I couldn't do that with knots. They wouldn't give me those hours or days. So I was just like, man, that's sucky. But yeah, so I did a hayride dead end diner and I'm a scarecrow. You, you scared that was, me a few times. It was interesting because I didn't really know what to do as a scarecrow. Like I didn't really think scarecrows were scary I, I even remember um playing um until dawn and there's a scenario uh where you're talking to a doctor and it asks you like what are you afraid of clowns zombies scarecrows i'm like who the hell is afraid of scarecrows they're made of sack and hay who's scared of scarecrows so i was just thinking like what the hell am i supposed to do as a scarecrow and then figuring out that i have like this massive hay maze oh Hey, but I'm doing something here. I'm doing something in the living room. Doing something. Say a little interview here. Yeah. Like a little podcast thing. Okay. Sorry. No, you're good. <laughs> We're chilling. Hi, dog. So, yeah, I have this massive playground of hay bales to play around with. I'm just like, hmm, all right, say no more. I already knew how to do a little bit of like parkour or stuff like that. And I just 
ran around that thing just nonstop jumping over and people had no idea where I was going to be coming from. I was like a, I was like a scarecrow shark. Nice. Just like coming through. You don't know where I'm going to come from. And I had another coast scare, so she helped out a lot too. Yeah. I remember coming yeah, through a couple of times and you were just, you were just either making fun of me because you were finally taller than me. <laughs> or, uh, you actually got me, I think, once or twice when I went through. Because I think I went to, I think I went last year like three, two or three times. So, yeah, it was pretty good. It was, it was a little weird because originally they told us you're supposed to be making crow noises. I'm just like, huh, hmm. something made of hay making bird noises. It didn't compute to me. And then my uh, my Maisley just said, just do whatever you want. I'm just like, all right, I'm just gonna talk. Yeah, I'm already hey, sentient. It, it worked for you. Bird noises, bird noises. It, it really worked for you. It was, it was a fun time going through that and to see that, and then to them kind of doing that again this year with with like a newer maze, but kind of like the same concept in a way was pretty. They cool. had they used a lot. Of, they used almost everything from Dead and Diner. Yeah, they did. They just rethemed the facade. It's like okay. I was like, all right, whatever. I mean, and, they, and then they super scale down the hay maze. I'm just like, yeah. <laughs> but you know. What do you Tell them I have fallen. You opened and closed a maze in 2021 at the Los mm-hmm. Angeles Haunted Hayride. Like I said, not many people can say that. I still, I still like, I still liked my role in Hayride. I made the best of it, and it was still so much fun. Oh, I bet. I mean, it looked like you were having a lot of, especially because you had the freedom to kind of run around there and stuff. They could do different mm-hmm. things. That must have been a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah. It was like the most energetic. Mm, I guess now comparing to the my monkey role. Oh shoot. Well, I think I think Scarecrow was still my most energetic. Really? Because it was it was a big field yeah. that I could run around it instead of just one room. Small Even though room, yeah. still, it was more, I guess it was more like a vertical kind of way of roaming around, as opposed to my Scarecrow horizontal right. plane of playing. Speaking so of, of of the Monkey Man, twenty twenty two, this brass year. monkey, that brass monkey, 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 brass. Uh, 2022, man, this haunt season, you got the opportunity to go and play where it all started for haunts, which was not nice scary farm for the 49th season to close yes, the dark ride, man. I mean, we were talking a little bit about this when we first started, but dark ride to me, uh, a very special maze, a very genius idea of a maze. I mean, I love everything about this maze. Sad to see it go, but excited to see what comes next. Um, the emotions going into this. So when you get when you went to audition, man, how did the audition process go for you? Were you were you nervous going into Knotts' audition process, or you were kind of like, eh, I'll get what I can get, and, and uh, you know, I'm I'm gonna make the most out of it. I I felt comfortable because I've already been scared for a long time, um, three years. I was just like, okay, another audition. Come on, let's go. I was just nervous because now it's Knotts auditions. Yeah. And I had no idea how they worked. At Dark Harbor, they gave me a little taste of beforehand how it worked. I'm just like, okay, I'm kind of ready. Um, Hayride, there wasn't really anything to audition for. I can't, I can't even forget how the application went. That's how out of my mind it was. And so coming through nice, I was just like, okay. The big leagues. The big <laughs> Let's leagues. Go. go to the majors. Mm-hmm. And it was pretty chill it was just asking for to certain situations certain scenarios act out a certain way um thank you for the lighting i know that, that was some good lighting right there <laughs> my dad my dad knows a lot of that kind of stuff <laughs> um and one thing i didn't know was how their catwalk they did they had us do a catwalk and that was it was fun doing a catwalk was really fun to test out like how you interact with guests walking like if it was like a street position and then i guess in my head that's probably where like they really like figure out like okay you're going here you're going there right. probably right because they even they even mentioned like if you have like a character in mind you can act it out here i'm just like oh really? that's how this is gonna work <laughs> um, that was a spam Gotta love the spam calls, right? Yeah. But yeah, I was just like, oh, that's how it works. And I didn't really have that in mind. It was just like, shoot, if only I knew. <laughs> but hey, I just did whatever. I tried to be as clowny as I could be. And I guess I did a little, t- <laughs> I don't know. 
in my head, I'm like, I guess a little bit too much with like rolling around doing the Trotsky dance. And they probably looked at me and just like, yep. just like all right. <laughs> Did, now this is this is probably me being the the nerd and fanboy I am, but did you ever uh, when you were dressed up as the monkey for Dark Ride? Did you ever want to do the Family Guy pointing angry monkey at people? Did you ever do that one? I have been pointing at people. I did point. It's mostly whenever they point at me, it's like I see them, just like I see you. And if only they could see your face, just. And then I do the same thing with my face. I'm just like slur. <laughs> you went full like you went full golem on that. That's the that's the thing with me. I don't know why it just came to my brain. It's just like you know what? I'm just gonna buy toe shoes, and let's see how this goes. <laughs> and because monkey, you don't wear shoes. Yeah. So I went out with feet. <laughs> Perfect. With my dogs out. There you go, man. I mean, you went and straight people, method, and people hated it. <laughs> hey, man, you went method, and that's what they love about it. <laughs> people just go oh, yeah. and cringe. It's so good. Now, I, I went through a couple times. Did you ever see me walk through? Yes, I saw you come through like uh, opening weekend. Okay. Because I, yes. I try to go in just, well, obviously for one. The How do I not there. miss you? That's yeah, true. I'm, I'm about <laughs> as tall as the platform you're standing on. All I have to do is this. Yep. Ah, hi. Ah. Um, that's cool though, man. I mean, so you 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 get... You get put into Dark Ride, man, um, th and it comes out that this is the farewell year. This is it for Dark Ride. They're they're packing up the carnival, they're packing up the Dark Ride, and they're they're leaving, man. They're 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 mm -hmm. out of here. Um, they packed up, they burned it to the ground, and left one monkey. Oh man, because that that was the thing with my simple. with my prosthetic. I don't know. The other monkeys were just fine, like nothing changed. I don't know why my I love my makeup artist. I love that she did this. I just don't understand why I was the only one that got treated with like the melted face look. And just like, oh, okay, I guess I'm dying. Yep, she's done. <laughs> she's done. Yeah, but I, but I rolled with it. I started like I started crying like a monkey, like trying to reach out of the box, <laughs> being like a victim. I'm just like I didn't know a monkey also meant I was a victim. So going into opening night, man, how was how was the nerves getting up there? Were you were you just kind of really excited to be part of Not Scary Farm uh, after being a fan of it, or was it something where like, you know, it was, it was most, a lot of pressure. Most of the nerves came out during like our dress rehearsals at Associate Nights, where the the workers and Knots get to come through first. I was there, and I was just like, all right, like, and I was still trying to get used to. How knots works, how or how scary farm does things, how their rules go. The people around just like, oh man, oh man, oh man, oh man. I was really nervous because uh, I still wasn't around uh, my friends. They were just next door, just in Carnival, so I still had to like get used to new people again. Yeah. Um, and deep, like, yeah, I was looking up to knots a lot. I've been going there for years and just seeing like. Everybody I've looked up to now I'm working with them just like Do I belong or am I just like am I not gonna be good enough for knots and that, that was getting to me a lot until after um, dress rehearsal That was doing a good job getting used to uh, Co-workers and it just takes one night at Denny's to like know more of everybody. It's just like, it was right after haunt That's when like all right all right, this is this is gonna be good. This is gonna be a good year. I trust I trust the people around me, and it was it was pretty cash money. Then night one comes around, and I got punched in the face. Uh, yeah, you totally welcome to knots. Welcome was... to knots. That's the welcome to knots I was expecting. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> I you, I remember you telling me about that. You got hit in the face after night one. I was like, wait, <laughs> what? Just boom? Like how? Were you out for a while, or did you just out like... the gate? It was, it was just, it was like, it was our last call. Like it was our, it was, um, it was ACAST's last hour to act. Right. So at least I was just able to go home right after that. But yeah, some dude comes in and is just wailing on Moth. I'm like, oh, okay, you're done. You're done. And once I found out, like I was the third one, just like, nah, nah, he's done. Nah, I, I want him. I want to see him in a cop car. Did, done. Done. Man, that's 
I'm not okay with that. I'm not okay with monster safety being at risk. I'm not okay with guest safety being at risk. I care about safety so much. Yeah, no, safety is important in, in, in this game, man. That's that's the, that's the name of the game right there. Is, yeah, have fun, but be safe. Yeah, 100. So going, you know, going throughout the season and looking at towards the end of the season, what was it like progression-wise? Like, I'm pretty sure you you started figuring out new ways to, to really, like what you said, hide in plain sight and, and really just kind of work that room the best of your yeah. ability. How did it work out for you? After like the third week, I kind of got used to just how the monkey room worked, where to pop out, where to do this, where to reach out, where to hide, where to stomp your feet and stuff like that. And it worked. I started noticing people just being a little like not – too phased by the constant like pop scares because it's just easy and people kind of expect it already so i was just like all right i'm bored too let me like finally act like a monkey and so i was just like i started dancing around i started like wiggling my feet like at people kind of just being like weird confused sometimes i puff out my chest like a gorilla or stuff like that and that's that's where a lot more fun started happening I started having fun with the guests, um, like banging my chest. I, I, it's like challenging, like the the other males around me being like, "Ooh, ooh, come on, come on, come on, test me!" And they keep walking. I'm like, "Oh, come on, oh, come on, you little little <laughs> pussy!" I'm like you, you, come on, come on! And then they do it, and then I go a hundred mode. I just like dance around. I start spinning. I'm just everywhere. It's, I just go monkey mode. I'm like swinging on stuff I'm not supposed to be swinging on. I go way harder, like over the monkey box. And just and people are just like, that monkey's crazy. Oh, yeah. It's the name of the game. It happens, yeah. They're like, come on, come on. Give me that energy. Give me that energy. That's what I want. It's the name of the game. And then I love it. <laughs> I love it. I mean, dude. That's what I started doing. And then. After conga lines, I hate conga lines because I don't get to really act out more because then I have to think of like, what's that person doing? What's that person? Okay, 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 okay. It's right. just a lot of mental management. Once it starts like breaking up, I'm like, all right, now it's have fun. So what I do sometimes is I'm on the top box. Like this top box, this is lower box. I roll off here and I come down to a perfect position where I just land on my feet and then, like, people get startled by that. And then once they go, again, once this is a, a broken up group, so it's no longer conga, I see them walk by, and I jump down to the ground. They see me, and they're like, he's on the ground, he's on the ground. And I just start chasing them. I go in all fours, and, ooh, 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 and, I, ah. <laughs> and they just start running. Uh, dude, that sounds like a lot of fun. Like, what do you think is going to happen when you're in a monkey room? The monkey's going to, like, be curious and look at you and just like, yeah, <laughs> I, I I wish I could have just been in that room just to film you for a night. That should have been that would have been a lot of fun, dude. Yeah. Awesome. And then, yeah, going out, man, closing it out. How emotional was that for the entire cast and yourself closing out this maze for the final night? The last week was such, an and it was so like high. Like I had a great last week. Because I was out in other haunts, other events, went to Vegas, came back, scared. No, came back from Vegas as a guest going through knots and then coming back to do the last nights. It was such like a great last week. It was a great way to close out the, the season, to close out the week. <clears throat> With just more ideas in my head like seeing more of the future and just being thankful, like where I'm at with the people around me, the bonds I've created, some things I've lost, but hey, it's probably necessary to keep moving forward. Um, the last night, mm, I had a little crick in my neck that kind of took me out for a little bit, but I came back in just ready and just like, all right, cool. Mm -hmm. And then, like during breaks, like it just felt like there's no way this is the end. There's no way. And like every break, I'm just like, it's getting closer. It's getting closer until the last break. I just like started hugging everyone around me. I took selfies with everybody. 
got IGs and man, by the time I knew it, uh, Monkey was just crying on top of the box. I was just like, <laughs> I started to scare while crying. <laughs> crying and scaring, crying and scaring. Yeah. Oh, monkey cries. Yep. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's got to be emotional, man, because, you know, you get so by the time I knew it, Yeah, by the time I knew it, it was time to take everything off. Yeah, I mean, you get so connected to the cast, bro. They're like a second family to you. And then to be yeah. closing out this maze once and for all and, and then whatnot, I mean – that is so many, so many inside jokes, so yeah. many stories, so many good scares. I'll remember that guy, or remember this, remember that. I'll remember that asshole. Yeah, fuck that asshole. <laughs> oh man. So I mean, you brought up something before you you got into real detail of how you went to Phil, but like uh, you talked about the future. Uh, what what do you want to see? Where do you see yourself in the future? Are you trying to go back to knots? Are you trying to just explore other options? Or, or what do you want to do for the future? In the now, I am comfortable staying at knots, um, learning more about like what's going on uh, on the backstages of Dark Harbor and Queen Mary. Is there's a lot of legal things, and I've I've been someone who's been like the most hopeful of like Dark Harbor coming back. It's like I know it's coming back. I know it's coming back. Like, come on, they gotta be bringing it back. Like, Shacktober is like it's fun and everything like oh maybe this is like the wake up call for like dark harbor to like finally come back but hearing about a lot of like legal stuff happening and stuff um it's just i'm i don't know i feel like i'm finally accepting dark harbor isn't coming back like there's stuff like i still don't know but hearing a lot about like stuff being sold stuff being stolen like um working on other stuff just like i'm finally like I'm finally taking that acceptance pill and just say, I guess that's it. That's it. But hey, listen. Maybe, yeah. The future looks bright at knots. Yeah. That's what I'm looking forward to more. And then even in like the deep future, we're just like, all right, maybe there is no dark harbor in the future. And then I started thinking more like my career path and choices to still be in haunts, like taking on management roles leading mazes or leading sections doing like doing zones and stuff like that set designs and then i don't know i have i have this gut feeling that like i want to start my own like my own event i have like this like crazy idea that i think is gonna i think will work i think people will be down for it but i'm still i'm still enjoying my moments right now Amen. Uh, I know, good. I know. Um, a New Year's resolution is to like finally write down a lot of my ideas. I have a lot of story ideas with like horror stories, a manga I want to do with my brother, a bunch of other stuff, and then finally like put down blueprint ideas about this event that I hope, hopefully, I can start or manage. I don't know. Once I'm older, once my body says, all right, no more scaring, time to start this shit. Hey, like, all right. only time will tell, my friend. Only time will tell. Yeah, yeah. I want to go back to college and learn, like, set designs and management, production management. That's what I want to, like, finally do. And Hans has woke me up and just like, now I know what I want to do. Now I know what to go to college for, for production management. I'm here for it, man. I'm here for it. Change the haunt world one step at a time. Yep. That is awesome, man. Well, man, four years going on your fifth anniversary next year, uh, and it's the fiftieth anniversary. Knots. Oh man, that's gonna huh. be a fun one for you, huh? Year five on the fiftieth. Five. That'd be cool. Five five zero, oh, man. There you go. Five, um, well, congratulations, man. You had not only a, a, so far a great career, but a, a great uh, 2022 to, to close out Dark Ride. I mean, that's that's an honor right there of its own and, mm -hmm. and to be a part of something special. Let's, Absolutely. See, let's see where this future takes you, man. Let's see if we, we see you on the streets next year, if you're opening up a new maze, if you're being part of a, a popular one. Who knows where it's going to take you, but I guarantee you the road's looking really good for you, my friend, and, I, and I'm going to be there every step of the way to support it. Yeah, thank you so much, brother. Thank you so much. And and everybody who's inspired me and just told me, like, you're doing a good job. And I, I all I can do is give that energy back forward to people who need to hear it as well. Oh, man. 
it's our pleasure to support you, hype you up any way we can, man. But um, for those who uh, want to keep up with you outside of this, uh, this today's episode, where can they find you on social media? My main thing is Instagram, and you can follow me at nameless underscore QM for ever. That's my main. That's kind of it. Um, nice. Most of my other social medias are kind of just for me. There you go. For you and the homies. I like it. Yeah. So, yeah, go go follow Nameless. Keep up with him, what he's doing. I mean, it sounds like he's got big plans for the future, and I'm here for them, and I'm here to support him, and I can't wait to see what those are. Uh, Nameless, it's been it's been an absolute pleasure to talk with you, my friend. We This is well overdue, and I'm glad we finally did it. I'm I'm so elated that we get to do this too. I've always loved your podcast, what you do for media for uh, for haunts and everything like that. That's I love so your passion. That's really it. I just love your passion for this. Hey man, you listen. I mean, we just we love our our goal is just to give our audience, our fans, our friends the absolute best haunt experience we can from the comfort of their own home. And uh, mm-hmm. I'm glad that a lot of people uh, give give us opportunities to do so. Uh, so we're just happy to be here. We're happy to to share everyone's stories, and uh, that's why we do this all month long because we just love we love hearing stories. We love sharing it for the world, and we just got to hear your story now, and I'm super stoked about that. So thank you so much for that. Thank you for Ooh. closing out a legendary maze known as dark ride that was awesome all right pete dark ride come on let's see what's coming let's see what's coming i know people know it. i know people know what's coming i don't and i kind of want to stay spoiler free yeah me too me no, too see no evil speak from real, real. You hear no evil don't give me spoilers yeah no spoilers do not spoil the 50th uh with all that being said uh i'm your host anthony you're watching the mindless horror podcast scare actor appreciation month season four I hope you guys enjoyed another great episode with my good friend Nameless, a.k.a. Martin, who helped close out Dark Ride for 2022. Um, so, with all that being said, we'll see you guys tomorrow for another episode of Scare Actor Appreciation Month. Let's go. Good night.